And then four years ago, I went in because my reading glasses prescription had to be changed, and I went to the optometrist, and he looked in that big machine into my eyes, and he gave it one of these, hmm, like you don't want to hear from your mechanic under your car, you know what I'm talking about? You know, whoa, how long have you been driving it like that? You know. So he sent me to a specialist, and the ophthalmologist, he looked in there and said, hmm. <laughs> so he sent me to a real special specialist who specializes in real special stuff. He said, Mr. Dryden, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're one of only one out of six million people in North America every year who get a malignant melanoma on the back of your eyeball. I said, well, lucky me. I never won anything before. This is great. I said, gee, Doc, I am having no luck at all with these round organs. Jeez. <laughs> and the shoulder thing? Ball joint. <laughs> Some kind of curse. I don't know what it is. Well, he said, that's pretty funny. What are you, a comedian? I said, well, as it turns out, yeah, he said, well... That's good. That attitude will help you. This will not be the most pleasant thing you ever lived through. Um, and uh, I want you to come up with the best joke that you can about this ordeal. Uh, but you are awfully lucky because only 10 years ago, the only thing we knew how to do was to pop that eye out. But now we figured out because we can't get to it with traditional laser or radiation. It's too close to your brain and you obviously can't lose any more of that. <laughs> but what we've learned how to do is to sew a radioactive button on the back of your eyeball and nuke it from the back. I said, sew something on my eyeball? Oh, goody! I was going to sew something on my eyeball this week anyway, Doc. These wimps with their little eyebrows. <laughs> I'm going to make a real statement. You know how they get... I, I, I'm thinking, you know, the back, if they have to drill from here, you know, that might hit something important. You know how they get to the back of your eyeball to work on it? They deaden the muscles around your eye and they just pull it all the way around, which is gross, but real handy. Just beats the hell out of that, you know. I mean, I can't see much over here anymore, but I was awake for this operation. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I want to keep an eye on him, you know. I <laughs> see what he was doing over there. Well, when I went home, I was quarantined because I was radioactive man. I had to wear a big lead patch when I was around anybody because I could glare a bird's eye frozen dinner into a hot meal in about 30 seconds. <laughs> I was disappointed that my x-ray vision only seemed to work on the Filipino mailman, but... I got a kick out of glaring at the dog and making her butt itch. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Not a superpower that comes in handy that often, but I was ready. So I had eight fairly miserable days of a thing sewn to the back of my eyeball to think about jokes. <laughs> and so when I got back, he took it off. He said, okay, you're going to... I've lost about 80% of my vision here, 90 maybe. Um, but it's looking good. It's draining. It's not getting bigger. It's doing exactly what we want. And I just had a checkup last week. As a matter of fact, I have to go over three months. Everything's looking good. And um, he said, where's my joke? And I thought, wow. He remembered. Okay, I was glad I was ready. I had thought about it. Had not much else to do. So I said, Doc, you know, what I do is I go out and I, I fly around and drive to places and I meet nice folks and I speak to them. And it occurred to me that when I get on that plane to Chicago next week, I'm going to have this patch, and I'm going to be wearing my favorite maroon jogging suit that's the most comfortable flying rig I have. And so it occurred to me that when I get on that plane, I'm going to be a one-eyed, one-orbed, flying purple people meter. <laughs> some groan, some applause. Thank you. He, you can explain it to the younger folks a little later if you want. Well, he, he thought I could do better. I said, gee. Doc, give me a break. I mean, you know my history, and by now, as you know, I'm half blind and half nuts, so you've got to give me a couple of, <laughs> couple of points for that. And he gave me an extra sucker for that one. So, 
Anyway, I hope that I have said something that helps you toward your goals. You have some magnificent goals. You're doing a great job out there in your special districts. It's, uh, the place wouldn't run without you. I'm honored to be here with you. you got a lot of obstacles, but just remember that falling on your face is still moving forward. Thank you so much for having me.